The year is 1986, and an unsuspecting world is about to be changed forever. Nintendo, a rapidly growing company in the video game industry, has just released a new game in Japan called The Legend of Zelda for its Famicom disc system, and it's gaining notoriety fast. In just one short year, the company will release the game to the Western world on the Nintendo Entertainment System, unknowingly changing life as we know for good. Three decades later, the world is a much different place, but the Zelda franchise remains strong. With a new install just around the corner. Having influenced the industry in many ways throughout its lifetime, people around the world owe their childhoods and even careers to the many games in the Legend of Zelda series. But in what ways did the franchise really change gaming as we know it? Grab those wooden swords and shields, kiddos, because we're venturing on our way through nine ways the Legend of Zelda franchise changed gaming forever. Number 9. Saving This first one may be obvious to some, but its impact on the gaming industry was the most useful out of all the other points on our list. I'll admit it isn't the most super glamorous so we're starting off with it. Save files. If you didn't know, pre-Legend of Zelda, there wasn't really much way of saving games on consoles. The check just didn't exist. Games were made to be played in one sitting and would maybe track, you know, some high scores. If you wanted to pick up where you left off, well then you better hope your parents didn't mind letting you leave the console running for hours unattended or pray the game you were playing had those long level codes so that you could just jot them down in your handy dandy notebook. But thankfully, the innovators over at good old Nintendo upended everything every Everyone knew by having a small amount of battery-powered RAM that could preserve progress. It's not the most elegant solution, I know, the battery will die out without some serious maintenance, and once it's gone, you don't just lose your save, but the ability to save. Still, it reshaped how we could design games and challenges when we didn't need to start from scratch. Number 8. Silent Protagonist in a Talkative World Link may not be the most talkative video game protagonist ever created, but he was one of the first to be relatable. The best part is that he did so without saying a word. Silent Protagonist are all over the place, especially in Nintendo games. An important quirk with Link, however, is that the world talks to him. Samus and Mario don't speak, but there's almost no dialogue or text in any of those games. Link lives in a world with people going about their lives, with everyone else having some amount of personality. It's easy to fit our own lives into Link and feel like his adventures are our adventures. The fact that Link still doesn't speak after 30 years further solidifies Nintendo intent on making his adventures less about him and more about the player. Even with a voice acted Zelda coming out, we're still not going to see Link speak. This gives players the ability to internalize what they feel his responses would be, role-playing as the young adventurer, thus forcing them to relate to him as if they are him, because they are on the inside. And I know that Link did speak in both the CDI games and his own cartoon, but maybe that's part of the reason both of those are terrible. Link works well as a character because he's you, or he's you if you were a young elf boy. Number 7. An Expansive World with Expansive Lore Let's chat about the story for a minute. The Legend of Zelda franchise is brimming with stuff, and its focus on world-building has been an inspiration to the industry. Sure, the first two games, like other games of its time, weren't full of backstory or any story besides Save the Princess, but what those games did do is set up the world that players of many generations would come to love. With the release of A Link to the Past 1991 and Ocarina of Time several years later, it was clear that Hyrule and its residents had a lot of stuff going on. It was these games that got gamers obsessed with the storyline of Zelda, and for a while it was the obsession that plagued Nintendo, and with each release, players wanted to know where it fit into the Zelda timeline. But it was and until 2011 that Nintendo released an official timeline which revealed there were multiple timelines in the Zelda universe. Now, The Legend of Zelda wasn't the first to create an extensive story spanning multiple installments, but it no doubt pushed the envelope and helped inspire other games to do the same. Number 6. Side Objectives Lots of games in the era of the NES had optional secrets, everything from wall chickens in Castlevania to warp whistles in Mario Bros. 3. The Legend of Zelda didn't invent optional content, but it did help popularize it. Even in the first title, there were goodies that you never needed to complete the game but were a boon in your quest. You could get a raft to get hard pieces, and you could find secret caves with a guy who just gave you money. And some of these weren't hidden. They just demanded you come back when you had what you needed. Take the raft example. You could see across the water, and you knew you wanted to get there, but you wouldn't be able to unless you got the raft. Then you could backtrack and claim your rewards. It breeds a little more life into the world by giving you optional content. Another good example of this is the quest for Biggeron's sword in Ocarina of Time. After completing a bunch of side quests that had nothing to do with the game's main story, you were rewarded with a very strong weapon that is super useful but not necessary to complete the game. Stuff like this gave the world of Hyrule more depth and it made it worth exploring. And this way of getting players to venture beyond the main story has continued throughout the Zelda franchise. Number 5. Control over the world After a link to the past, almost every game in the series, even the spin-offs, has something in common. Link could control something about the world. The first two Zelda games introduced us to a new world with new creatures to meet and or kill. But even the most imaginative worlds gets old. What, you don't believe me? I mean, look at all the rehashing of Tolkien's world. 
world. Dwarves dig, elves live in trees, yada yada yada, yes I know, we've all been there before. So when we get to game 3, A Link to the Past, when we've seen a lot of the same enemies and people, developers decided to recontextualize the world as we knew it. It's still Hyrule, but now there's a dark world with creepier and stranger inhabitants. Later games will have you travel through time, change the seasons, and slip into alternative dimensions through cracks in reality. And just when we thought we've seen everything there is to Hyrule, we get another way to play with it. With A Link to the Past, Nintendo set a new standard for themselves in gaming. It wasn't enough anymore to just give players a world to explore. You also had to give them the tools to alter it. Number 4. Z-Targeting Next on our list, we're going to narrow things down to Ocarina of Time's control scheme. In the young days of 3D games, controls were often finicky and clunky, which made them frustrating for transitioning gamers. And if you played a lot of games at this time, you saw this happen. I mean, come on, remember Castlevania 64? Probably not, because it was awful. We can think a single feature for Ocarina's next level controls, and that's Z, or lock-on targeting. This is the feature that made combat in Ocarina not only tolerable, but enjoyable. Pressing a button would let the player set sights on a specific enemy, so instead of having to fumble around with the camera, they could focus on the battle at hand. This addition laid the path for how real-time combat in a 3D environment should be handled for years. Even if you think Ocarina shows its age, consider that this single mechanic is still used in games like Dark Souls today. Number 3. The Music Nintendo has one of the largest libraries of memorable medallies in the gaming industry, and part of the reason is The Legend of Zelda. Even from Game 1, we could see more wonderful melodies. Forget The Legend of Zelda for a minute. I want to talk about The Legend of Koji Kondo, the composer on all of these games. Even if you've never played the original Legend of Zelda, you know a lot of the music in this game. Why? Because they've used it over and over again. But even if they keep using the same enduring melodies, The Legend of Zelda didn't rest on its laurels. The original game had strong melody, but with A Link to the Past, we could see how that melody would become a sweeping composition, featuring different instruments and a percussion track. The emotional parts got a little bit more emotional, and the intense parts got a little more intense. Zelda wasn't the only game to try and do more with sound, but they were right there at the forefront proving that games were a medium that could convey a full fantasy saga with a soundtrack to match. Number 2. Puzzles The second to last spot on the list goes to all Zelda games and their continued support of the good old-fashioned dungeon puzzle. Dungeons and adventure games in general can be boiled down to a maze or room after room of large amounts of enemies, but the Zelda franchise tends to have a fair balance of figuring out where to go, fighting off enemies, and taking a moment to look around and figure out what you have to do next. What makes Zelda puzzles so good in my eyes is their constant incorporation of items you found on your quest. Puzzles show you how you've grown over your journey, and all the dungeons end in one of the greatest feeling kinds of puzzles, the boss fight, where the items you get in the dungeon becomes the beast's downfall. But how did this mastery of design affect the world of video games? Well, to start, you could look at all the action-adventure games to incorporate puzzles that followed Zelda. Secret of Mana, Jack and Daxter, Okami, and Darksiders, I mean, just to name a few. I'm not saying that without Zelda the genre wouldn't exist, but the series' success definitely spawned some interest. Number 1. Overworlds, Towns, and Dungeons It's easy to look back at the NES era as one big amalgamation of games, but it turns out that games released years apart inspired each other. The Legend of Zelda came out pretty early, and despite the fact that most people remember it as an adventure game, it also helped inspire the overworld and dungeon dichotomy that would come to define RPGs. Think of top-down RPGs. You explore a big open area with several locations that contain either towns or dungeons. It's the bread and butter of early Final Fantasy games. But The Legend of Zelda and The Legend of Zelda 2, which featured towns and an overworld, were ahead of both Final Fantasy 1 and Dragon Warrior, and no doubt inspired those games. The Legend of Zelda will always have a lasting legacy in the adventure game genre, but some of its greatest contributions will be linked to RPGs. Well, there you have it, 9 ways The Legend of Zelda changed gaming forever. With franchises like this, it's tough to touch upon everything it's done for the industry, so if you have some opinions or you want to expand upon some of ours, feel free to post in the comments below. And as we approach the release of Breath of the Wild, make sure to be on the lookout for some more Zelda-inspired videos. If you'd like, subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified when more content goes live. Also, be sure to leave us a like on Facebook. The link is in the description. And as always, thank you for watching. See you next time.